church say amen. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. Come on, let's celebrate God. Let's especially celebrate God for our children dancers who blessed us this morning. Let's stand for all the mothers in the house, the biological mothers, the adopted mothers, the foster mothers, the grandmothers, big mama, whatever the role was. We are here because of them today. We are here because of them today. If it had not been for them, <laughs> don't celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. Folk don't know what you had to go through to get here. Folk don't know who was arguing with you this morning. Sure, say amen. I had really wrestled with this week about trying to tailor make this morning's sermon along the uh, lines of Mother's Day, and then God uh, rested me in my thinking too much moment and said, what do you think making disciples is if it isn't helping mothers' prayers get answered? Don't change the course, just stay the course. Mother's Day comes and goes, but somebody needs to know how to be a better disciple today and how to get deeper in their relationship with the Lord and stop being a consumer Christian. And so we're going to continue on in this series. I should be able, if y'all behave, uh, to finish today. The first thing we emphasize along this road of becoming a disciple is that I must spend time with Jesus. Can't, can't be a disciple and God be put on the back burner. The second thing we emphasized was I must learn to love him supremely. Whether you want to admit it or not, nobody else can occupy the number one space in your life but Jesus Christ. I know you love your boo. And I know you do anything for your grandchildren and everybody else. But that number one space, that, that number one space, everybody got to fall behind your relationship with the Lord. Then the third thing you must do, and we must learn to do, which may be one of the most difficult things to do, is that I must learn how to love every other disciple. Just, just tell the person that there's that. That there's that. I, I was good long as we could focus on Jesus. And give him some time, but you, you switched it up. Now you telling me I got to love every other disciple. Then the fourth thing that we talked about last week was I must always do what Jesus tells me to do. Now, you know some of us struggle with anybody telling us anything let alone somebody we can't see, touch, or feel. I must always do what Jesus tells me to do. It implies that you're listening to him. And if you're listening to him and you hear him, then the only response is obedience. I figured that was going to fall right where it fell. I must always do. And we emphasized the point last week that 
you only believe as much as you do. I believe in love, but you don't love nobody but yourself. I only believe as much as I do. All the rest of this is rhetoric. And so it brings us to the fifth thing this morning. In order to be a disciple, the fifth thing goes back to this transition. I must serve others unselfishly. Let's, let's repeat that slowly. Let's, let's repeat that slowly so it won't hurt as much going in. I, some of y'all ain't talking, must serve others unselfishly. Now, tell the person that you said that half-heartedly. You, you didn't really mean what you, re you didn't really mean, ain't nobody texting you right now. Ain't no need you looking at your phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you ain't taking notes right now. I ain't, ain't gave you nothing to take notes on. I, I, I must serve others. How? So if nobody in your house is getting served but you, If y'all could see some of your father's servant faces, like, what kind of Mother's Day service is this? <laughs> well, didn't your mama serve you unselfishly? You, you really don't want me to go there this morning. I'm, I'm trying to keep in context. But don't me, make me appeal to mama this morning. I, I've got to learn to serve others. Service is a very important part of our spiritual growth and our spiritual development. God says it's not all talking in, it's giving back. The Bible says if you want to be the most important person, you must take the last place and be the servant to everyone else. Now, that's pretty countercultural to America. He says, if you want to be the most important person, you've got to take the last place. Be a servant to everybody else. Let me help you. This philosophy will correct most of the marital challenges people have. Because a lot of our challenges is because we feel our mate is being selfish. But if I'm operating in the biblical context, under the biblical mandate, and I'm a follower of Christ, he says that the most important person you've got to take, you've got to take the last place. Somebody say last place. And I've got to put them in front of me. God literally says that kingdom of God values are the exact opposite of the world's values. The world says it's all about me. We do it all for you. It's all about you. Have it your way. You deserve it. You got to look out for number one. The world says you're more important than anybody else. And I can tell you, that's certainly a way to be miserable in life. God literally says, give your life away. The world's value system says, get everybody to serve you. And Jesus says, no, leadership is not dependent upon how many people serve you, but how many people you serve. The best leaders are those are who are helping people, other people, not using the people to serve themselves. The world says live for yourself. God says give your life away. 
our challenges, we look in all the wrong places for significance. Success does not give significance because you can always find someone, somebody else who is more successful than you are and you start feeling bad. Insecurity comes by way of comparison. Salaries don't give you significance. You can make a lot of money. Get, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with making money. You can make a lot of money, but it won't give you significance. They will tell you that money does several things. It makes life easier. It removes some worries. It can make you more comfortable. But money will never give you significance. And that's the key to happiness. And we get tired of things, and that's why we always redecorate them. Come in your house and don't recognize it sometimes. It comes from service because God wired the universe that the only way your life takes on significance is you've got to give your life away. Because God wants you to learn to be like him, unselfish. The most miserable people, the most miserable people, keep looking at me right now, the most miserable people, the most miserable people when people in life are self-centered. It's all about me. I'm living for me, my pleasure, my need, my comfort. It's all about me. And that's a way to be a miserable person. Happiest people in life, those who give their lives away. They're serving others. Whether they got money or it does not matter, their significance gives them their satisfaction, their meaning, their purpose, and their value in life. Went too fast. Their significance gives them their satisfaction, their meaning, their purpose, and their value in life. As long as you keep it to yourself, you devalue what God has put inside of you. So he says, give your life away. Well, y'all hear you thinking, and here's the relevant question. Who's our model for this? Jesus. You might have known his church. Here's what Jesus says. But even I, the Son of Man, came here not to be served, but to serve others and give my life as a ransom for many. He said, I came to serve, and I came to give. That defines the Christian life. I went too fast. I came to serve and I came to give. I came to serve and I came to give. The more you learn to serve, the more you learn to give, the happier you're going to be. The more fulfilled, you know, I'm giving y'all some good stuff this morning the more fulfilled you're going to be because when you do that, God says, I found somebody who gets it. I'm going to pour blessings into their lives. You missed it. The more I serve and the more I give, the more I open myself up to God's blessings. If I want to be blessed, I need to serve and give. The blessings come down when you serve and give. I hear some of my more mental folks asking, mental in the sense that it got to make sense to them, why is serving so important to spiritual growth? Because you can't just take it in. you got to exercise. And spiritual exercise is when you do something unselfish, when you serve others, when you minister to others. You've got to exercise. You just can't sit, soak, and sour. You just can't keep taking it in. If your whole Christian life involves going to church, sitting down, or watching us virtually, listening, taking notes, and going home, it isn't going to work. Impression without expression leads to depression. Impression without expression leads to depression. You're not built but to hold so much in. You've got to exercise. 
Tell the person that you write that down. Ministry is movement, as I saw I said. You got to learn to move it. If you do that, then you're going to grow. If all you do is eat the right food, you wouldn't grow. I don't know anything about that. I just, uh, <laughs> that ain't my testimony. Okay. <laughs> you got to exercise. Sometimes people are just spiritual feeders. And they, all they do is listen. They come to church and listen. They turn on Christian podcasts and they listen. They go to Bible study and they listen. They just start getting fatter and fatter and eating more and more spiritual food, bigger and pimp, bigger, until you're so big that you have to roll down the aisle. If you don't move it, if you don't move it, if you don't exercise in your life, you will not grow spiritually. you got to develop some spiritual muscles. Talk, Pastor. How do you do that? By serving. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you got to learn to be the servant of all. There's another thing. Y'all want the kids to come back out today? <laughs> that this verse teaches. That is, you never, oh God, Jesus. You, you're never. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most of y'all sitting next to somebody who can get y'all to the exit. You, you, you're never going to grow spiritually until you learn to sacrifice. <sighs> Spiritual growth requires sacrifice. Why? Because it's all about love. And the essence of love is giving. The essence of love is sacrifice. If you've never had to sacrifice for anything, you don't know how, know the deeper levels of love. You know shallow in love. But deep in love are levels of sacrifice, losing your life to find it. Here's what Jesus says in Matthew 16. If anyone wants to be my disciple, he or she must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Now, there's three definitions here of the word sacrifice. The first thing I have to do, I got to learn to deny myself. If I didn't lose you before, it's been good spending time with you. That literally means I'm putting my agenda on the shelf and I'm taking down God's agenda for my life. It's not my plan. It's God's plan. It's not my purpose for my life. It's God's purpose. I'm going to deny myself, deny my plans, deny my life. I say, God, what did you put me on this earth to do? I want to go with your plan. That's denying yourself. That's sacrifice. Some of us are stuck right now because we're still trying to do us. And us ain't working. And you keep running into the same roadblocks. You. You need to get out of your way so God can use you to do what he planned for you to do. Then the second thing, and I ain't like the first, but I really don't like the second. It says take up your cross. Well, what does that mean? Take up your cross literally means be willing to, to sacrifice for good and for God, even if it means dying. Some of us like God as long as we keep him in church. But God ain't been out in these streets. You, you, you do understand that the cross is an instrument of death. And, and, and only God can take a negative and turn it into a positive. The cross is a symbol of torture. T today, we don't understand what it means to take up your cross because we think of the cute little jewelry we got around our neck. 
But the cross was a symbol of torture. It was a device for capital punishment, extremely cruel and excruciating painful, invented by the Romans. God took that and turned it into a positive. Do you know what a cross is? It's a minus sign crossed out. It's a negative turned into a plus. Every negative thing in your life, God has the ability to turn it into a cross. God takes the negatives in your life, the minuses, and he makes up with them what Jesus Christ did for you, and he turns the negative life into a positive, into a plus. Anybody trying to keep you negative ain't from God. Text says, take up your cross. That means you got to be willing to die for Christ. Now, there's one more thing. Jesus says, if I'm going to be his disciple, I'm going to spend time with him. I got to love him supremely. I got to love everybody else in the church. Look around. Pray for them folk you can't stand to sit on the other side. You know, folk who's in the section you was going to sit in and then you saw them and decided to go sit in another section. I got to obey him continually. And I got to serve others unselfishly. This brings us to the sixth and final thing I got to do to be a disciple. If, if I'm going to be a disciple, I got to learn to pass on the good news. When I hear it, I'm supposed to tell somebody else about it. Here's with Matthew 4:20. This is Bible. Jesus called out, "Come and be my disciple, and I will show you how to fish for people." And they left their nets at once, not waited to the commercial, and went with him. Okay. So what's he talking about here? Let's put the context. One day, Jesus walking down the shoreline of Sea of Galilee. Peter, James, John, and Andrew are brothers and cousins, and they're professional fishermen. In, In those days, you didn't fish with a rod and a reel. You fished with a net. All the fishermen should have said amen. (laughs) They're on the shoreline mending their nets. Jesus is walking by. He looks at them and he says, come be my disciples and I'll show you how to fish for people. You, You missed it. They're at work. And Jesus has nothing enough to show up at their job and say, leave your job. Some of y'all leave church to get to, but you won't leave work to get to him. I, I can't do that. I'm too busy. Keep being busy. Keep counting him out. Keep putting other things and other people in his place. You're going to be so miss, busy you miss Jesus. He means by that. I'll show you how to change lives. I'll show you how to get people into heaven. I'll show you how to bring people to me. I'll show you how to share the good news. You'll be fishers of men and women. He says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men and women. The correlate to that is if you're not fishing, you're not following. You just coming to get. You're not blessing anybody else. I said to ask you this question last week. Is anybody going to be in heaven because you went fishing? If you're not telling to somebody else, you're not being a disciple. God expects us to pass it on. If I knew the cure for cancer and kept it a secret, I should be put in prison. But I know something better. And you do too. I know how to have your past forgiven 
I know how to have purpose for living. I know how to have a home in heaven, and God calls us to share it. Paul is talking to Timothy. Timothy was the disciple and apprentice of Paul. Paul says, Timothy, take the teachings that you heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and entrust them to reliable people who will be able to teach others also. In this verse, there are four generations. Paul says, I've got good news, Timothy, and I need you to pass it on. Now, Timothy, you're going to pass it on to other people who are reliable enough to pass it on to a fourth generation. Is anybody in your family going to be saved because of you? One of the responsibilities of grandparents is to make sure their grandkids get saved. You ain't got to clap. <laughs> Parents too busy. Children going to miss heaven. Sometimes you got to love them enough to say, well, when, when you come spend time with me. Yeah. You, you're going to go to heaven. A lot of us sitting here today because some grandparent. Somebody, Big Mama, say, I don't care what y'all do up north, but when you come south, when you come down here, we going to church. You ain't got no church clothes, don't worry. Target open. I got an account over there. Just go over there and give them my name. Somebody told the somebody who told the somebody who told the somebody. So here's the dominant question for your family. Is the path to heaven, is the chain that was passed down to you through generation after generation after generation going to be broke with you? I ain't playing for today. Grandmama going to be up there looking for you. I brought him to church. What happened? Is it going to break with you? Here's the frightening thing of Christianity. It's one generation away from annihilation. All those generations can be stopped because of your negligence. Because you were more important than God. Jesus says, to be a disciple, you got to pass it on. Matthew 28. Therefore, go and make disciples. Let me help y'all, because, you know, we read stuff and we don't understand it. Once you're one, you got to go make others. And, and you don't make others by, by coming to church. You're a disciple. Now go and make other disciples of all the nations. Go and make disciples, all ethnics of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach these new disciples to do the same thing, to obey all my commands I've given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So you don't just get to watch. You got to go do something. I don't care how you see our service. Are you doing anything with it? You, you, you fixing dinner while we on. You just wait for the commercial break. You back? We don't have any commercials. Why do we do that? 
Because we believe Jesus says we ought to be radical witnesses. Our goal for this year ought to be each one reach one. Uh, I want you to pray, Lord, this year, 2024, you didn't got done with all your COVID prayers. Now, come on. Lord, help me to bring one person to you this year. Just, just, just one. Just, just one. Not two, not ten, not a hundred. One. I, 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 I want somebody to be in heaven because of you. And, and, and quit discounting folk. Quit thinking, well, they ain't worth saving. Have you looked at your record? Do you want us to put the video on and put reverse? Quit dismissing folk because they don't meet your standard. Everybody you see breathing and living is a child that God created. I dare you. Start praying about your friends who don't know the Lord so God can make it easy. They'll come to Christ. If you can reach one person for Jesus, that's what it means to be a disciple. We pass it on to somebody else. Well, if I do these six things we've been talking about these last three weeks, I become a disciple. Here's what happens. Jesus says, here come to shout. I'm going to shout by myself. Jesus says, if you try to keep your life for yourself, you're going to lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, for the sake of the good news, you will find true life. I, I, I don't know what your next step needs to be. Maybe I'm committing my life to Christ today, or, or maybe I'm going to get baptized when next time we do it. Maybe I'm going to join a small group. Maybe I'm going to start a group. Maybe I begin tired. Whatever the next step is, you got to make a commitment. But let me help you. If you make a commitment, but you don't tell anybody about it, you're probably not going to keep it. It'd be like saying to the lady over there all them years ago, but baby, let's get married, but we ain't going to tell nobody. Now, those of you who know her, know about how far that would have went. To not make a commitment suggests I might be ashamed. It's like you're the secret friend. I wanted to give that plain way to pass through. <laughs> There's something real about telling somebody else. When you tell your pastor and I can pray for you and help you, so what's your next step? Let, let, let me close this. Yeah, we will be right on time. Oh, yeah, yeah, we go. We're going to make brunch right on time. We'll be right there. I want you to grow this year. L let me help you with my struggle. I've been through mass attendance, and I'm over that. For this chapter of my life, I want to see people become disciples, to get to know God for themselves. So if you want to grow scarcely, there's two things. If you choose to grow, you've you got to make the decision to quit being a casual Christian. I'm going to quit being an immature baby believer. I, I'm going to quit being a half-hearted, casual Christian. Some of you have a call on your life, and you know you have a call, and you've used every excuse you could to keep for fulfilling what God has called you to do. Let me let you in on a secret. 
the call don't change. You get to decide how long you're going to be disobedient. Because it is disobedience. But God's not going to change the call. He's not going to change the address. He's not going to change the intensity. He's going to keep knocking. He's going to keep knocking. He will block some stuff. He will take away some stuff. He will isolate some stuff. He will make it so don't you dare think you can go one-on-one with God. I'm going to be a godly man, be a godly woman in 2024. But you, can't nobody else make this choice for you. But you got to take advantage of all the things we try to provide here so you can be a disciple of Christ. Can, can I share with you my nightmares? That there are going to be some folk who listen to me for 40 years and still go to hell. There are going to be some folks who sing in the choir, preach the gospel, did whatever. We, we met all the church positions and still missed the kingdom. What an indictment! to be this close to him and blow it because other people's opinion mean more to us than his does. Don't give me, you're a good father, you're a good husband, you're a good person, but you're not a disciple. You make good money, you don't do it wrong to anybody, but good ain't good enough. God has put a call on your life. He wants to turn your life from success to significance. Too many successful people come to church. People even evaluate our churches by how many successful folk we got. God deliver me from successful, and I can't say what I want to say. Give me a few significant folks. Give me some folk who want to turn the world upside down, who want to see folks saved and their lives change and become meaningful. Who don't mind getting their hands dirty? Ain't always summoning somebody else. I don't do that. Your little two-cent degree don't make you smarter than nobody. It means you're trainable. Trainable. Spell it with me. T-R-I-E. Trainable. And you have to understand this. God calls us to serve. Nobody in this church is any more important than anybody else. Respect the custodians. Respect the parking lot folks. Don't walk over the ushers because you late and you got a place you want to sit. You should have got here on time. You disciple you? Well, are you acting disciplish? That's a made up word. God has called us to a greater calling. And my nightmare is, God, have I done this for 40 years and missed you? You know what I once said about this ministry? Now he was a good pastor, a good preacher but he introduced me to Jesus. And if I, not Pastor Troy, not not the new Salem kid, I want you to meet him. I know. I know he wipes away tears. I know he's a gap filler when you're dealing with your own grief. I know he's a prayer answering God. I know that everything mama and grandmama taught me wasn't just a myth. There's truth in their teaching. I know he's a healer. I know he can make a way out of no way. 
I know he can open up doors that somebody else has shut. I know his yes is enough for me and I don't need anything else. I know God is who he says he is. I don't come here to convince me. He's been too good. He's been too good. He's been better to me. I used to didn't understand that when they used to say, but when you keep living, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Because if my life would have been left up to me, I'd be a mess right now. So I dare you today. I'm in your face today to make a choice to serve and to sacrifice. And if you do that, you'll find significance in your life. The doors of church open, the choir gets ready, the officers stand. There's somebody here today who needs to become a disciple of Christ, not join the church. No, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Make a decision to have a relationship with him. We've got a person online who's already accepted Christ. Is there anybody else? Come on, daughter. Oh, come on, y'all to get more excited than that. Not Pastor Troy, not New Salem. Do you know him for yourself? Your day, your hour, your moment. God, I hear you. I know what you want me to do. God, give me strength for that yes. God, I'm tired of telling you no. I'm tired of telling you, wait a minute, next Sunday, when I get myself together, God, all I got is right now. This moment, this hour, this decision, God, here's my life. God, here's my pain, here's my sorrow, here's my grief, here's my misery. God, I need you. God, not only do I need you, but I want you. I want you to do for me what I've seen you do for my mama and my daddy I want you to do for me what I've seen you do for my grandparents for auntie and them somebody in my life prayed me to where I am right now is there anybody else what you gonna do what you gonna do you're good but are you a disciple Come on, God. Come on, God. What better way to start at your life with God as number one in your life? Is there anybody else? God, I want them to win today. God, I want them to win. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? I know your crew thinks you got it all together. But they have no idea what you're wrestling with. That, that you you one tear away from crumbling. Come on. Come on. Are you sure? Come on, my brother. Come on, my brother. Come on, my brother. Come on. Come on. God, my house today. God, my house today. My spouse, my children, my grandchildren. Today, God. I surrender that authority, God. 
It begins and it ends with you. Come on, God. Come on, God. Make yourself real. Make yourself real. Make yourself real. Of everything I could give them, I want them to have a relationship with you. I want them to know that you for themselves. God, we did good with them. Good schools, good friends, good relationships. But God, we didn't lock it down when it came to you. God, I want them to know you for themselves. Because long after I'm gone, I want them to know it pays to serve you. And it pays every single day. If they can't get to me, I want them to get to you. Matter of fact, I need them to get to you first. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Your day, your hour, your moment, your choice. Last call. Last call. Come on, God. Come on, God. Come on, God. Come on, God. Last call. Last call. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? I want you to win. You, you have no idea how bad I want you to win. Sure, say, man. Let's celebrate God. Ushers, hold your post. I'm believing God that we are a mature enough congregation that we know it's offering time. We know it's offering time. We put up the ways that we're going to give. I'm not going to pass the trays. You can give on your way out. Hey Amen. We're not going to give to be seen or guilt people into giving. If you're going to be a disciple of Christ, we believe what we do. 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 Let's run the top five. Greetings, New Salem family, friends and guests from around the globe. These are your top five announcements for this week. Number one, graduation Sunday is June 9th, where New Salem will celebrate students who graduated from high school to college. Let's plan as many as possible to join us in person. We'll see you there. Number two, if you participated in the baptismal service, you can pick up your baptismal certificates in the foyer before and after worship services on Sunday, May 19th. If you have any questions, please contact the pastoral office, Joy Bruton at 614-930-2204 or jbruton at newsalemcares.com. Number three, New Salem. If you've had a life transition or an address, email or phone number change, please let us know. 
we want to update our membership database and stay connected with you. Scan the QR code on the screen to update your information today. Number four, do you want to stay connected weekly to the New Salem Baptist Church? Then subscribe to our amazing newsletter, which comes out on Wednesdays by 12 noon. For more information, please email Dr. Monica Lowe, Director of Communications at mlowe at newsalemcares.com. And number five, mark your calendars for our upcoming 115th church anniversary weekend, June 22nd through June 23rd. You do not want to miss this celebration. The celebration will kick off with the church cookout on Saturday from 12 to 4 p.m. at Fort Hayes High School. And then we'll continue the celebration at our 10 a.m. worship service on Sunday, June 23rd. Please join us in person on that Sunday. Check out the e-newsletter for more details in the coming weeks. All of these announcements can be found on our website, NewSalemConnects.org, the e-newsletter, and our social media platforms. We encourage you to stay connected with us. Have a blessed week and happy Mother's Day. Sure, say man. Can we post the uh, graphics for our community outreach this for the month of April, please? All right, there we go. All right, so for the month of April, here's our graphics, our impact in our community. We served 636 meals on Wednesday night. Our Bread of Life Food Pantry served 1,034 individuals. The Clothing Boutique served 112 individuals. Our Linden Fresh Market, 20,376 people served. And, we had, and that all involved 221 volunteer hours. Let's celebrate the difference we're trying to make in the marketplace. As a part of our Mother's Day celebration and really a follow-up with our Women's Day um, retreat and weekend. Um, we decided, or lady decided, and I, I did what every good husband does. I said, yes, dear. Yeah. Uh, we want You want to share what we're going to do. Good morning, New Salem, in person and online and around the country. Today we want to celebrate the women that we have lost. Pastor and I have been here 40 years, as you know. But we were sitting one evening and thought about how many women have gone on and received their wings. If, for whatever reason, we don't mention your family member's name, please make sure that we have that information so it won't be an oversight, counted to our head and not our heart. But Proverbs 31, 31, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. So for 40 years, these are some of the women that we want to lift up and celebrate that they have received their wings. They're not in any particular order. So Sally Conrad, Roxy Dabney, Dorothy Cage, Barbara Walker, Paulette Gentry, Betty Wolford, Ruth Coleman, Geraldine Sims, Margaret Sidney, Marlene Taylor, Emma Banks, Millicent Sims, Gilda Pitts, Catherine Nichols, Deborah Davis, Arnett Harmon, Bernice Troy, Ellen Harris, Kimberly Jones, Bertha Powell, Yolanda Scott, Patty Solis, Cheryl Jackson, Katherine Jones, Sarah Watson, Thelma Wade, Brenda Gibson, Tamala Culp Clark, Roxanne Cade, Rebecca McDaniels, 
Rhonda Carter, Carla Coben, Sandra Mack, Jean Burse, Colette Granger, Benja Dozer, Sharon Burke, Minnie Cleveland, Retta Ray, Deborah Jones, Shirley Watkins, Judy Pendergrass, Sadie Blackwell, Tamala Collins, Connie Diggs, Laura Williams, Dorothy Turnbull, Janine Jackson, Bertha Brooks, Sonny Long, Katherine Simpson, Patricia Ruffin, Jean Smith, Juanita Spencer. You should know that Pastor and I were able to sit down and write these names down without looking anywhere. So we want to thank and praise God that all of these beautiful queens passed our way in our 40-year history. And so the families that are here representing these names, we love you and we know that today may be a difficult day, but remember, God is still holding you in his hands as we walk through our grief because he loves us. Amen. Again, if we have admitted anyone, just let us know, and we will make those adjustments in terms of that. This is uh, always an interesting day. It has great highs and great lows. But what makes it significant is family. So I'm going to close this service differently today. I just want you to to bring your family to the altar. If you're related to somebody in here, just get them and come on. Sometimes we take family for granted. Get as close to the altar as you can. You can't get all your family at the same place next time we do this, y'all sit together. Those of you who don't have family, come on down here. Just, just stand where you are. If you can't come down, just stand where you are. Lady and I will adopt you for 30 seconds. memories are friend to our faith. But God, if I'm honest, it still hurts. The days of struggle, days of one more phone call, one more visit, one more how you doing, So God, thank you. Because our pain is in direct proportion to our love. Some are dealing with recent loss and some loss has been long ago. But we still miss them. 
And so, God, we ask you to remind us again of the importance of the now. To be present with those you left us with. Our siblings. Our parents. Our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren. Our nieces and nephews. Our spiritual children. God remind us that if not for you, we could not make this. So God, we make a commitment today to pray less about us and more about them. That they find peace and they'd find joy and they'd find significance. They'd find acceptance. No matter what they're struggling with, God, no matter what their demon is, their family, God, remind us again, except for your grace, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. So, God, we pray for broken relationships to be mended today. Somebody to pick up the phone and say, you know, whatever the fallout was, it really doesn't matter that much. You mean more to me than some dollars, some time, some stuff. I want you to win. Fix the family, God. Fix the family, God. Folk running around with the same blood and they ain't speaking to each other. Fix the family, God. Lord, you've been too good. You've done too much. You brought it too far. And so today, God, we've decided to be radical disciples and love you and love others as we love you. Bless this house. Bless these, your people. We ask your son's name. Amen, amen, amen. Give somebody around you a hug as you depart. All the mothers have a great day today.